In modern day Japan, mysterious entrances started appearing all over the country. Beyond these portals is another dimension with roughly the same size as the Tokyo metropolitan area. This dimension is called Mato, the demonic metropolis. This realm contains special trees that grow peaches, which grant unique powerful abilities to anyone that eats them, provided they are women. However, dangerous monsters called Shuki also roam throughout the Mato and have been responsible for various disasters ever since. To combat them, the government formed the Demon Defense Force, a specialized battle unit composed entirely of women who received power from the peaches. From then on, the power dynamics between men and women shifted, leading to women receiving a rise in social status while it has become the norm for men to be relegated as second-class citizens. Although most people have already adjusted, third-year high school student Yuki Wakura isn't exactly thrilled with this arrangement. Trapped in a painfully mundane existence, the boy dreams of high school glory and popularity. Yet the only remarkable skill he possesses is his exceptional talent for cleaning, which his classmates depend on for keeping everything spotless. On his way home from school, Yuki can't shake the thought that his life after graduation might just be a cycle of him slaving away until he fades like everyone else. Lost in his thoughts, Yuki fails to register the shift in his surroundings as the bustling streets of Tokyo are engulfed by mist, and in an instant, the boy finds himself transported to Mado. Realizing this, Yuki is horrified, as that is what happened to his sister, who went missing five years ago due to a Mado disaster. Despite his panic, the boy tries to keep calm and quickly goes through his phone for the Mado disaster manual which explains to him that while the gates that connect to Mado are usually affixed to one place, some of them can appear in unexpected places. The manual instructs him to avoid moving needlessly and wait to be rescued by the demon defense force. Unfortunately for Yuki, life has other plans and a terrifying Shuki suddenly appears behind him. He immediately runs away but soon enough comes to a blocked passage. However, just when he thinks he is all out of luck, a beautiful lady suddenly appears before him, accompanied by a monstrous companion similar to the other Shuki. Too stunned to move, the boy watches as the woman eliminates the monsters in front of him one by one. While in battle, she introduces herself as Kuka Yuzin, the chief of the seventh unit of the Demon Defense Force, and assures him that he is in safe hands. However, soon enough they see countless Shuki running toward them, and Kuka instructs Yuki to hop on her enslaved beast. As the relentless chase unfolds, reinforcements from the Demon Defense Force materialize swiftly exterminating the pursuing demons. While Himari reports to Kyuka of their arrival, Nei scans the surroundings, detecting groups of Shuki approaching from the 6 and 9 o'clock positions. Kyuka commands the newly arrived members to handle those threats while she will protect Yuki. As the two groups disperse, Himari swiftly exits the vehicle, transforming her arm into a formidable weapon to exterminate the approaching demons. Simultaneously, Shushu transforms into a giant, effortlessly crushing the monsters surrounding them. Meanwhile, as Kyuka and Yuki are making their way through Mado, they stumble upon a girl fleeing from a Shuki, ultimately slipping from the edge of a cliff in her panic. Reacting quickly, Kyuka manages to catch the girl before she plummets, but their situation takes a dire turn as more demons give chase. In an attempt to evade them, Kyuka commands her enslaved beast to turn right, but its slow reactions make sure they aren't going anywhere like this. With their ride exterminated and surrounded by a horde of Shuki, Kyuka uses a spell card to form a simple barrier as she thinks over what they should do. The girl thinks over how if it were just her she could handle it and laments over how her peach's blessing is a real failure of a power even for someone as physically strong as her. However, the memory of her peers' condescending attitudes toward her and her ambition to become the supreme commander fuels a surge of anger and determination within her. The girl thinks about how she has not yet verified if men could be of any use but finds herself compelled to make a decision as the barrier slowly starts to expire. Kyuka then turns to Yuki, asking for his name and reveals that there is a way for them to get out of this, but he will have to do his part. Yuki happily agrees to do anything he can to save them, and with a subtle grin, Kyuka declares, I'll make you my slave. Kyuka explains that her ability harnesses the strength of those she enslaves and without wasting any more time, she pins him down and extends her hand to Yuki asserting that it's time to submit. While Yuki has never come in contact with the girl before, when he sees her finger stretched out, he instinctively moves and licks it, and in an instant, he transforms into a colossal beast, becoming her slave bound by the chains of eternity. Kyuka is delighted by Yuki's new form as she hadn't anticipated him to be this strengthened. Riding the beast, Kyuka then charges in battle and uses the boy's enhanced form to swiftly exterminate the Shuki. As the other members of the unit arrive, the remaining creatures begin merging with one another, forming a monstrous demon. Kyuka instructs the girls to stay back and tend to the kids while she and Yuki take on the formidable adversary. The two then charge into battle, and with their coordinated efforts, they deliver a devastating blow, cleaving the monstrous demon in half. After the intense encounter, Yuki reverts to his human form, earning praise from Kyuka for his commendable efforts and instructs the rest of the squad to return to the dorm. While the boy is confused by what just happened, Kyuka slowly closes the distance between them, asserting that he he can keep working as her slave and surprises Yuki with an unexpected first kiss. 
Kirka then explains that the compensation for her ability is to give her slave a reward each time they complete a task. Despite Yuki's reluctance to take advantage of Kyuka, given that he's the one who was saved, Kyuka becomes flustered as she resentfully explains that when it's reward time, her body moves on its own with no regards to her will. While her Shuki slaves receive pork, it appears that for a corrupt mutt like Yuki, she deems that a kiss is more fitting. And after a plot-filled interaction, Yuki is finally back on his feet, still in awe from losing his first kiss in such a way. Kyuka then explains that even if one of the Shuki were to leak into the human world, dozens of casualties would happen and because of this, her objective is to become the supreme commander of the Demon Defense Force, as their current leader is too lax. With Yuki, she can use her power to its fullest and will be able to go after the Sea of Leader. The girl then asks Yuki to work for her. Overwhelmed by insecurities, Yuki explains that the only thing he is good at is housework, but to his surprise, Kyuka enthusiastically welcomes his household skills. Witnessing this, Yuki excitedly announces that he wants to be a hero there and Kyuka seals the deal with a sly grin. Now that they've officially committed, Yuki starts dreaming of breaking free from his dull life and convinces himself that by staying around and slaying Shuki, he can finally avenge his sister. Besides, receiving rewards from Kyuka would mean that his hard work is paying off. The two then make their way to the 7th unit dorm and the boy is surprised by how normal it looks. Kyuka reveals that the dorm was constructed according to Meadow's yin and yang principles, boasting a powerful barrier. She then assures Yuki that she will handle all the bothersome paperwork for his school and instructs him to enter, declaring it as his new workplace. Despite Yuki's big dreams of becoming a member of the Demon Defense Force, upon entering the dorm, Kyuka introduces him to the rest of the ladies as their caretaker. This revelation leaves both the girls and Yuki equally surprised. Kyuka then explains that while he will be her slave during battles, outside of combat, he will work as their caretaker. With mixed emotions, Yuki questions if he isn't going to become a member of the Demon Defense Force, but Kyuka quickly makes it clear that men can't join. With that, the unit members waste no time doling out orders, everything from throwing out their trash to washing their clothes. All the while they assign the 11-year-old as his superior, Yuki resigned to his fate realizes that he is going to be bossed around even more openly than in the human world, but the girls officially welcome him, marking the beginning of Yuki's life in Mado. The following day, Yuki starts proudly cleaning the dorm to perfection. In the midst of this, Ashuki suddenly appears and attempts to attack him, only to be swiftly obliterated by the protective barrier surrounding the dorm. Back from school and witnessing Yuki's shock reaction, Nei explains that Mado is divided into eight directions, each guarded by a demon defense force. Their unit in particular is stationed at Mado's southwestern demon gate, leading to frequent monster appearances in that area. As another Shuki approaches, Ne remarks that smaller ones like that can be safely ignored. However, before she can finish her sentence, Himari swiftly exterminates it and reprimands Yuki for chit-chatting instead of working. Despite Yuki's protest about the potential crossfire danger, Himari dismisses his concerns and instructs him to prepare their lunch, while she reminds him that the only reason a man like him has the privilege of living in their dorm is due to Kyuka's generosity. With that, Yuki skillfully prepares a delightful meal for the ladies, much to their satisfaction. And though he's very happy with their praises and feedback, a sudden realization jolts him back to the purpose of his presence, which is to be a hero and help with the Shuki extermination. As he attempts to discuss this with Kyuka, she dismisses his concerns and instructs him to focus on housework until the next attack. And before he can make his case, Himare abruptly stops him with her arm having transformed into a blade and menacingly questions if he is complaining about the commander's orders. Luckily for him, Kyuka intervenes and assures them that if Yuki misbehaves, then she as his master will twist him off. Later, while Yuki diligently attends to his cleaning duties, he accidentally comes across Himare taking a bath. In a flustered shock, the boy quickly looks away to leave, but unfortunately, as he turns around, Shushu is waiting behind him. The girl then reveals that she shrunk down, stealthily followed him, and successfully captured a photo of the compromising scene. With a mischievous grin, Shushu presents him with an ultimatum. Either she shares this to Kyuka, or he becomes her slave as well. The next day, poor Yuki finds himself at the mercy of the deviously playful Shushu, who spends her time reading romance manga while bossing him around. As he cleans, Yuki contemplates the need to find a way to delete the compromising photo on her phone, fearing she'll bully him for the rest of his life. While attempting to pick up the unattended phone, he accidentally grabs Shushu's underwear, Caught in the act, he becomes flustered, but Shushu teases him, reassuring him that it's not a big deal as she considers him more of a neat little pet than a guy. Besides, picking up dirty clothes is part of his caretaking duties. With her encouragement, Yuki picks up her underwear once again, but Shushu snaps another picture, adding it to her collection of blackmail material. Later, as Yuki contemplates his situation, he entertains the hope that even if Shushu rats on him, he might avoid trouble with Kyuka. However, just then, he hears noises outside and decides to investigate. There, he witnesses Kyuka putting Himari through rigorous training when suddenly a Shuki appears and Kyuka swiftly eliminates it with her bare hands. 
While this display leaves Himuri admiring her commander, the opposite can be said for Yuki, who realizes the severity of his predicament. As he reflects on his situation, Nei suddenly nudges him. She explains that Kyuka, Himuri, and herself will soon leave the dorm for a meeting, instructing him to keep an eye on things with Shushu. Nei innocently suggests that this will also be a good opportunity for him to get to know Shushu better, as she's a nice person. With that, the two are left alone and Shushu seizes the opportunity to have Yuki massage her achy muscles after her intense training. And while Yuki initially contemplates putting his foot down, the sight of her plot changes his mind. Extremely pleased with the massage, Shushu questions how Yuki became so good at it, and the boy explains that he gained practice by massaging his big sister. Shushu then reveals that she is the youngest of three sisters in her family and she grew up without a dad. Throughout her entire education, she attended an all-girls school, resulting in her never having had a conversation with a guy before. This is why, when Yuki came to the dorm, she watched his every move and decided to turn him into her slave because it seemed like fun. Yuki protests the craziness of it all, but Shushu simply remarks that, in her opinion, what matters most is having fun, which is why she moved to Mado in search of excitement. With her back feeling better, Shushu proposes they play a fighting game, and to spice things up, the loser has to strip off a piece of their clothing. This proposition leaves Yuki flustered, but Shushu reminds him that slaves don't have the right to refuse, roping him into the game. Predictably, Yuki loses every match and is compelled to strip completely naked. Initially hesitant, Yuki expresses concern for safety, but Shushu simply laughs it off as she takes on a larger form to restrain him. And much to Yuki's extreme embarrassment, Shushu bursts into laughter at how small and cute he is. Just as she indulges in her amusement, they suddenly hear an impending attack from a group of Shuki outside the dorm. Without hesitation, Shushu dashes towards the entrance to confront them. Utilizing her power, she transforms into a giant matching the monster's size and defeats it effortlessly with a single combo. However, her moment of triumph is short-lived as another massive Shuki attacks her from behind. With Shushu now surrounded by monsters, Yuki returns to the dorm, brainstorming ways to transform without his master. Recalling his previous transformation after kissing Kyuka's hand, he begins kissing different pieces of her clothing. As his leg starts to transform, he sees progress, and in a state of desperation, he even resorts to licking Kyuka's boot, which finally triggers a partial transformation retaining only his human head. Aware that this form is temporary, he uses his newfound strength to rescue the struggling Shushu, and with a single powerful punch, Yuki tears the demon's body in half. As he triumphantly falls from the air, he transforms back to his original form, landing him perfectly between Shushu's large chest. Back to the ground, unbeknownst to Yuki, his transformation left him uncovered, exposing his member to Shushu. In embarrassment, the boy hastily retreats, while flustered Shushu contemplates how impressive he looked. Later, when the rest of the unit returns, Yuki endures a painful back massage from Kyuka, while she reprimands Shushu for her carelessness in battle and commands her to thank Yuki by assisting him with the housework. However, the moment Kyuka and the others leave, Shushu takes advantage of the situation, sitting on Yuki's back and asserting her dominance as his master. The girl once again blackmails him with an exposing photo of him, solidifying the continuation of their unique relationship as Yuki finds himself under the authority of two masters. The following day, Kyuka and Yuki take a gateway from the fifth squad to reach Yamagata Passage as they take a brief break from their duties. Leading Yuki to a Madame Mishap Memorial, Kyuka recounts a tragic incident at Mount Gassen in Oizawa, where dozens of Shuki invaded her village and mercilessly slaughtered everyone. Among them was a particularly powerful demon with a distinctive single horn known as Unihorn. Though the demon defense force managed to eliminate most of the invaders, Kyuka reveals that she discovered that the Unihorn escaped back into Meadow. Driven by vengeance, she vows to annihilate the creature and avenge her village, urging Yuki to be prepared for the inevitable confrontation with Unihorn. As they prepare to return to Mado, Yuki persuades Kyuka for a detour to a famous cafe known for its parfaits. Seizing the moment, he reveals that he too lost his elder sister in a Mado mishap, empathizing with Kyuka's quest for vengeance but advises her against burning herself out before getting justice. As Kyuka relishes her parfait, Yuki is captivated by her radiant smile, a contrast to her usual self. Amidst savoring their desserts, they suddenly receive an emergency call from Mato. Without hesitation, Kyuka extends her hand to Yuki, and with the boy's transformed form, they return to Mado in no time. Back at the dorm, Kyuka commends Yuki for a job well done and timidly instructs the boy to accompany her. In her room, Kyuka asks Yuki for assistance in undressing, leaving the boy flustered. He questions if this is meant to be his reward, to which she begrudgingly replies, what else could it possibly be? Following significant plot developments, the squad finally convenes, and during the meeting, Himari and Nei report that they detected a crater-like formation housing a substantial number of Shuki. 
seemingly forming a nest. Recognizing the urgency, Kyuka orders the unit to mobilize on their vehicles, while she and Yuki ride together. Upon arriving at the site, the squad gets to work and uses perfect teamwork to eliminate the swarm of Shuki. However, the situation takes a turn when the formidable unicorn Shuki appears, striking down Shushu with a powerful beam. Witnessing this, Himuri attempts to retaliate, but the rider of the unicorn shields it, knocking out Himuri as well. With the two members incapacitated, the girl reveals herself as the archenemy of the Demon Defense Force and questions Kyuka about the whereabouts of her little brother. However, before she can reveal his name, the merging Shuki interrupt her, and in a flash, the girl effortlessly crashes the monstrous demon. Kyuka swiftly attacks the girl, but she easily deflects her and grabs Yuki with her tendril-like hair, intending to rip him apart. However, as the two come face to face, the girl recognizes Yuki, but before she can speak, Kyuka intervenes and cuts Yuki free. With the girl now hurt, Kyuka attempts to finish her, but the unicorn shields her, and the two swiftly retreat. While Kyuka initially sees an anger urging Yuki to chase them, the sight of her wounded comrades grounds her and commands Yuki to prioritize their safety instead. Back at the dorm, after laying Himari and Shushu to rest for their recovery, it's finally time for a reward. As Kyuka commends Yuki for a job well done, she resentfully comments on the unconventional rewards his subconscious conjures. In the midst of this, Kyuka speculates that the humanoid riding on top of the unicorn must be a new species of Shuki. Yuki, however, notes that she bore a resemblance to Oba, his missing sister. Despite Kyuka's skepticism, she acknowledges the possibility and emphasizes the importance of being prepared as their paths are likely to cross again. After that gameplay encounter is over, Yuki resumes his caretaking duties and contemplates why his sister would be attacking the Demon Defense Force, especially collaborating with that horn monstrosity. Lost in thought, Nei interrupts his pondering by pointing out the overflowing pot. Taking charge, Nei then instructs Yuki to kneel as she has some senpai business to take care of. Anticipating a sucker punch for endangering the unit members, Yuki is surprised when Nei instead gives him a wholesome hug, expressing gratitude for saving Shushu and Himari. With that, Nei then offers to assist him with cooking and the two prepare a delicious meal for everyone. Later, as Yuki takes a bath, Shuchu surprises him from behind, expressing gratitude for saving her earlier and decides to reward him with a back scrub. When Yuki protests and tries to turn around, Shushu stops him, teasingly asking if he's sure since she's completely exposed, leaving Yuki flustered as he hesitates. However, as he gains confidence thinking that she is pranking him, he turns around exclaiming that he wasn't born yesterday, but quickly regrets his decision as he's met with a reality. Shock Yuki screams and runs away in disbelief, but accidentally stumbles into Himari as she's changing. In his panic, Yuki tries to explain, but Himari transforms her arm into a chainsaw and begins to chase him around the dorm. Amidst the chaos, a portal suddenly opens and Tenka, the commander of the sixth squad, along with Yachio, the second in command, arrive. Intrigued, Tenka takes immediate interest in Yuki as she instructs him to fetch Kyuka. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe for more videos like this.